Okay, now we're starting proving triangles congruent. Over the last three sections, you've been looking at triangles and angles and things like that, and the sizes of angles um, using algebra or using the remote and exterior angles. Now you've done all that, now you're going to prove that triangles are congruent. Okay, um, and there are several ways of doing it. In exercise 4.4, you're going to use two, which is the SSS which is side, 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 and SAS, side, angle, side. And one of the things that you are going to use on both of these is the included angle, which is your new vocabulary just for this particular uh, exercise. Okay, for this one, here's uh, the first postulate you're going to come up against, which is side, side, side. Um, this is the most obvious one. Um, think about the, the one that sometimes links into this is Pythagoras, where obviously you've got a right angle triangle. For Pythagoras, you're finding the lengths of sides. Um, this is the one that does side, side, side. Okay, so you've got to work out whether these two triangles are congruent by the, two, the three sides in each triangle. Okay, um, one of the ways that you're going to do it is using a flow chart. Um, either you can use a flow chart or you can do a proof table, it doesn't really matter. Um, but always, as you know, always start any proof with what you've been given. Okay, that's always your first line. All these three were given. Okay, um, from that definition, you know that this guy must be the midpoint between G and K. And if you think about it, all the sides must be congruent by side, 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 because everything's been told you. If this is the midpoint, GL must be congruent to LK. You were told that JK and GH are the same. And also you were told that HL and JL were congruent. So you've got three sides that are all congruent. So it's side, side, side. Okay, typical example of the sort of question you're going to be given. Again, look at um, the information you've been given. For a start, it tells you that the T is the midpoint of QS. The midpoint means that these two guys must be congruent. What else does it tell you? It tells you that QR is congruent to SR. Okay, and what else does it say? Well, for a start, if you think about it, this RT is reflective of triangle SRT and QRT. So this guy must be congruent to both triangles. So again, you've got side, 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 and that's the reason you do it. So let's start writing the proof. Okay, you know the proofs. It says flow proof, but it really doesn't matter. Here's your statements. And um, here are the reasons, all right. You know you're always gonna start with the given okay um, so you can quote everything that you've been given you also know that your rt is going to be congruent to tr and that's reflective and the moment you've got that then you can turn around and say that qrt is congruent to srt by side 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 you can either do it in flowchart or you can do it um, in in a block Another type of questions that uh, examiners love to give are things like this, optical illusion. They, I hate them because you know me, I'm a visual person, and when I can see light blues and dark blues and greys, etc., etc., um, and it all pops out to me. But um, I can see that if I draw a line down here, A through C, then I've got two triangles. So that one, I can see. Now I'm looking for question part two, side by side congruence to prove. So let's see what we're given. Well, what are we given? Well, we are told right up here that they are four congruent squares. So we know that this side here must be congruent to that. So we're good on that one. Okay, and similarly that this side must be congruent to that. So we're good on that one. And we know the line AC is reflective so we're good on that. So we can prove by SSS by saying exactly that. And finally, part C, what is the relationship between AB and CD? Well, two things, actually. Um, for a start, you can say that these two guys, they're both parallel. 
Okay, so the AD is parallel, no, not AD, sorry, that AB is parallel to CD. We can pull that one out. Okay, and we can also say they are congruent as well. Okay, uh, coordinate plane questions like this, um, you are given certain things. For a start, um, you are told what the vertices of A, B and C triangle is. You are told what the, tr what the coordinates of E, F and G are. Well, let's do it in order. First of all, best way of doing it to me is plot. Make sure that you plot them. Um, and as you can see, don't always go on the fact of visual, okay? Visually, they are do not look congruent, but you can never know, okay? Um, it, as it says in B, it says from the graph, it appears that the triangles do not have the same shape, so we could conjecture that they are not congruent, all right? So, not congruent. But it's only a conjecture. You, we have to prove it. Mathematically, we are going to prove it, all right? Um, and distance formula is the only way you can prove it. Well, um, if you look at AB, keep things, when you do this, leave it in, in the radical form. You don't need to use your calculator to find exact answers. Just leave it in radical form because if you've got two um, corresponding sides that have got the same radical, then you know they're the same without putting it into your calculator and coming up with a decimal point. Okay, well, as you can see from the example, um, all three sides apart from two sides are root 5 and two sides are root 17 um, and you're thinking okay well is the other one well okay well BC is root 8 and EG is root, root 18 as you can see from that so from that they're not congruent because you need to prove it by side 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 you've got two sides that are the same length but one side isn't so it's not congruent And here's the next one, side, angle, side. Okay, side, angle, side. And it must be in that order. You must have a side with the included angle, which is your vocabulary today, and then your other side. Okay, so if we look at this guy here, we're looking at angle B is the, uh, is the included angle. So it's AB, angle B, and CB. Same with this guy here. It's line it's yeah line e uh, f e angle e and then d e it must be side angle side okay so here's example three uh, we're doing a proof this time it's in a table not a flow chart um, but again everything must be start with what is given it's so much easier and finish up with what you've got to find and the reason well it says use side angle side so you know that your answer has got to be side angle side so all you've got to be doing now is filling in the blanks well um, for a start this guy is parallel to that so as you, you know as we did in uh, 4.3 the moment you see parallel lines start looking for alternate interior alternate exterior corresponding consecutive angles well in this car in this case it's alternate interior angles because of the parallel lines and again don't forget this guy I did say to you you're going to use this so often the reflective property okay and here's question three in your textbook you've got to write a paragraph proof well don't forget your paragraph proof your first one is always given okay and you've got to prove the triangle LMP is congruent to triangle NMO well, you know that's got to be by side, angle, side. So already you've got two out of them and all you've got to do is fill.